But daddy is the state of mind, you know what I'm saying? I'm your daddy. Let's go. Get up on y'all. Go learn today. Daddy, chill. Call me daddy. <laughs> what did I miss? That was great. That came, that the, the music came in so great. I wouldn't usually when we have a guest, I'm so used to him playing it off the phone. Oh yeah. So I was true. expecting the phone. Yeah. And then it just blew my ears out. And we went up ourselves. I'm it. not gonna lie, I just looked at the volume button. Yours was turned all the way up. <laughs> yeah, that was Max Play there. Max I was like Max. Whoa. A little loud there, brother. Okay, Tuesday, Tuesday. <laughs> A little too loud for my ears, brother. Uh, th- uh, wow, that kind of threw me off. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the pod. <laughs> yeah, we do have a guest today. I'll bring him in in a couple minutes here. A few things I want to talk about. My my face is blown up again. I, I can't get I, Every time I travel or I eat bad, bl- face just blows up. Don't eat bad and don't travel. Jeez, I, just, I think it was the casino. It's the smoke and the nasty air. Smoke will okay, get you. We just oh came my. off of what three days of Vegas. I was there six days, but yeah, three yeah. days. So yeah, you were three, three days is too too much for me. I was ready to go home four days. Ago. Um, that set that second day, I'm like, I want to go home so bad. I miss my girls. I miss my bed. I miss my pillow. I miss my wife. <laughs> Speaking of girls, Amelia's in softball, as you know, right? Yes. Okay, I was a coach. Yeah. I'm no longer a coach. Why? Apparently, I got vetoed out. <laughs> I literally got the girl. Co- so that's bad, Dad. Okay, dude. so <laughs> and I didn't do do anything wrong. It's just women in that in that um, the women coaches. Man, it is cutthroat. It's not like the guys. Like men were like, all right, you handle the outfield, you pitchers, hitters. Everyone kind of knows their role. So the head coach. Who's no longer the head coach? You got vetoed out too. No, no, no. It's all she. It's all girls. Okay. She was the head coach. She calls me and she says, Hey, I, I really need help. I'd love to have you. you. You played baseball. You understand the sport. I said, Great. So the first game, I'm involved. I'm out there. Come on, girls. Softball ready. Yeah. You know, teaching them, telling them how to swing. They're on, you know, they're on deck and they're just kind of like half assing it. So then practice comes around. I go to practice. I'm running the hitting drills, which that's what I want to do. Yeah. Because I think that's the most important at this age, like getting the fundamentals down. Yeah. It is very important. And I'm, then I I kind of interject on myself. They're, they're running this infield drill and I turn around and they're running the infield drill completely wrong, (laughs) completely wrong. They know it all though. Like base is loaded and they're telling all the girls plays at home. And I, I, I go, well, I said, listen, the second baseman is shortstop. They're, that's a long throw home for, for these little girls. Yeah, especially for a young, yeah. young lady. I, I tell them, why don't you just tell them, like third baseman, just feel, feel the ground ball and tag your bag. Easiest just way. Feel the, Close tag your bag. Less yeah. throwing. I said, first air. baseman, tag your bag. Pitcher, pitcher, she can make the decision whether she wants to go home or go to first. The ball second is short, tag your bag. Right? No. They wanted the play at home. Play every the plays at home. They're playing a win. So the next game rolls around, and Amelia's playing third, and there's bases loaded. I said, Amelia, get a fucking ground ball and tag your bag. I said it's way easier. the The odds of you fielding it cleanly, making a great throw home, the catcher has to catch it, which these girls are like, they're wearing more the the gear wear weighs more than them. Yeah, yeah. Especially so they got to catch it, and they got to be functional to tag home plate. Just feel the ground ball, tag your back. No, wasn't having it. Next game rolls around. I show up, and I knew. I knew. The coaches weren't – they didn't say, hey, Coach Mikey, right? <laughs> and so I'm sitting there. I'm like, what do I do here? Do I do I go on the field or not? So the head coach kind of, like, walks over to me, and I'm, like, on the other side of the fence. Mm-hmm. And Kelsey's the – she's the dugout coach yeah. to make sure all the girls are doing what they're – you know, the lineup, the positions – and I'm looking at Kelsey and she's like shrugging her shoulders. And the head coach rolls over to me and she like kind of puts her hand, hand on the fence. And I go, am I, you need me? I go, am I a coach still? She goes, I got vetoed. You got vetoed. And just walks away. I go, what the fuck does that mean? Does that I got mean? vetoed like, out. Shit? <laughs> I got vetoed. So, so afterwards, I'm silent on the drive home, right? Kelsey's like, what's wrong? 
I said, I'm a coach. Now I'm veto. I got vetoed. What does that mean? And she was like, these are the girl, these other girls that just they want full control. And I literally said, you know what? I'm starting my own team. Yeah. She yeah, goes, you should you start to. your own team. I said, I'm going to go out to all these hodunk farms <laughs> yep. and get the biggest girls yeah. <laughs> that are hauling out fucking was, barrels of hay. Yep. And I'm going to come out and we're going to be called. I told her, I said, we're going to be called the Justin Rebels. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, we're like going to kick everyone's ass. I love and that. they're going to regret not having me on the field. Because the practice shows up, they, they don't even know. I said, you need stations. 15 minute here, 15 minute here. Yeah. Okay, rotate. 15 minute. Fi you got to have, there was no, there was no, what's it called? There they're, was, more, they're more confused than a fat kid with a salad right now. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking A. <laughs> Sounds like 16 moms and a lot of last place trophies there. Is, yeah. Hey, Way too many chiefs. Yeah, not we had opinions. too many chiefs. Too many cooks. Welcome yeah. to corporate world, too. <laughs> All right, let's get into our guest. Today, we have Steve from One of One Card Shop. This is great, Steve, because we've never met. No, never. We've never had a uh, – we've had text conversations leading up to this podcast, but we've never met. We've never talked in person. I've never seen you. I've broken with you before in yep. the past. I broke with you guys last night. I don't know if you know that. Yeah, I think uh, I think Corey mentioned something. He was like, an update. <laughs> Top film update. Yeah. What's yeah, up? Like, I'm Teddy, by the way. Nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, it, this is cool because I, I made a post um, on Instagram about three, four weeks ago. And I was like, hey, we want guests for the pod. You were the first one to DM me, send me a message, say, get me on, which, which is awesome because yeah. most of the other people that sent me messages weren't, they're just sort of like, in the hobby they weren't they don't have a um business background a business background or even a business it was just people like hey i want to come on and like blow people up and i was like ah settle down <laughs> so i'm glad you reached out to me we were supposed yep. to do this last week and then we had a a late uh plans to go to we had to go to vegas last week yes. so it's, it's good to have you nice thanks i appreciate it. i appreciate you guys having me on yeah how's uh how's everything going like it's recently how how's the breaks the Yes. I mean, I don't, I, it's, it's pretty crazy unless, you know, I think unless you're a part of like those and I call them like one percent or breakers, which is, you know, the, the backyards, the, uh, you know, Layton. the Mambas, I personally can imagine it's a struggle for everyone. I mean, breaking is mm -hmm. tough. So I've, so I've been doing this since 2016 now. So I've been, <laughs> I've been through like, I feel like the, like every era of breaks, um, mm -hmm. And I've tried telling people like who are breakers who want to get into it because I feel like everybody and their mother just thinks they can do what we do, which you, you can, but you're going to hate your life once you get behind the scenes. Um, it, it's, it's tough. I mean, you know, we're running, <laughs> we're running micro fillers, fillers to fill breaks, which we've never had to do before. It's like the wild, wild west. I think you said it in the text message. It is unbelievable. It's definitely nowhere near COVID. COVID was the, like anybody could break mm. anybody. Well, um, not only anybody could break, but there was no allegiances with breakers. No, no. Back then, someone wanted to spend five grand. They're just whoever's live is getting that money. Yes. There, there was no like, oh, hey, we have this community and this guy's only going to break when we're live. Yeah. Back then, it was just like, I want to spend money. This guy's yeah. live. I don't even care what product he has. I'm fucking ripping. I'm spending my yeah. money. I'm chasing. It, it was John Zion. It was like, I'm just chasing John Zion. Yep, it's crazy. And and then the the, the I think the, the part that makes everything worse, like the worst part about I think honestly breaking right now and even filling breaks, releases are so few and far between. And when they when they are when new product is released, it's not like at, I'm getting like 15 cases of stuff like I used to pre-COVID. Like pre-COVID, I would get like Bowman Draft was my Super Bowl in December when it came out in December. Um I mean, I'm getting 15 to 20 to 25 cases from distributors of Bowman Draft 2018, like crushing it, right? Yeah. Like, hobby cases were, were, I think 90, no, cheaper, like $83 a box for a hobby box. <laughs> Fuck, 2018 dude. Bowman Draft, dude. Like, Take me back. Yeah. Unbelievable. Like jumbos were 125. Take me back. <laughs> and 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 this is this is a time where you can get into a case break for like 40 bucks. Oh yeah, like the like the the filler team, like I call them my filler team, my most expensive team was like one hundred and five dollars. Yeah, <laughs> now they're now they're like four hundred. 
Yeah, yeah, like four hundred. Right? What yeah, were the What were the Rangers? They were like four, four, four around four hundred. Teams are up to five hundred. Some people, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's insane. So like you get you know, there's releases are few and far between. You get not only that, but you get much less product. There are way and and I and customers don't care about this part of the hobby, but the margins for us are so slim, dude. Like it's crazy. Ever since Fanatics took over in is it twenty two December was their first release they took over i think yeah it was jack jackson holiday bowman draft that was their first release that they had their hands in that product was that was and that was the first year that my allocation got destroyed like i was expecting from all my distributors you know the the, the usual 10 15 20 cases of every skew i was jacked for it and then ever since then it's like well we have two um and then Wave one, right? <laughs> we have two. And then on release, it's like, oh, hey, we actually only have one. If you want that second that second case, you have to pay above retail for it. Yep. It's like, <laughs> so like the breaking atmosphere is just insane. And then in getting product is insane. It's like playing roulette sometimes. And then filling breaks is even harder. Like I see you guys fill breaks on, do you guys fill breaks on um like on a post? Is that how you guys do it? Like I, I usually do a post. We usually we typically get about 10 to 15 spots before we go live. And then yeah. we're, we're live and we're doing fillers the same. We're same doing the same thing. thing. We're doing fillers and stuff to get it filled. Yeah. I don't see. That's the cool thing about you guys is that I, first off, I, I'm so bad at content. Like I try, but I'm just, I'm stuck in that 2016 era where I just need to, I feel like I need to hire some millenn- like not even a, I'm a millennial, but some young kid that knows algorithms to help me mm-hmm. out. I think if I posted something like you guys do, there's no way I could be sick. Like nobody would comment on it. <laughs> yeah. Like, you I do. The content, the content is, is huge for, that's why I brought this guy in one. Cause I, I knew he could be a good breaker, but two, I didn't want to do that. It was so, so much time yeah. I was spending and my wife's going, what are you doing? I hear the same this music over and over again. I'm like, I'm editing this video and it takes me two, three hours to forget it all. I could just hand it off to him and I go, Hey, Make a video about this. Make a video about this. Make a video about this. We try to do a, a reel a day, which mm-hmm. is fucking hard. Well, especially like traveling, like we're in Vegas. I, I definitely miss four days, but the biggest thing is just getting it every single day. Like consistency, says, yeah. Consistency. I think thing. you would do great with the content too, because I, I I watch yeah. some of your older videos and I'm like, this is good stuff. You're getting yeah. a 10, 10, 11, 12 thousand views. Like that's mm-hmm. that that helps, and the content helped us. The only reason we ever became or we got on the like fanatics's radar is because our content guys yeah. they reach out to us and like hey we, we love the content and that was a tribute to my wife she was like you have to do videos every day you have to you have yeah. to stay relevant so um i was gonna talk to you about where was i going with this oh when you guys let's take us but take us back to 20 to 2016 so you you started yeah. one-on-one car shop in 2016 but you were you doing stuff before that so 20, so I started one of one in 2017, 16 is when I started on Facebook and, uh, okay. <laughs> Facebook's tough. Um, those, I mean, everything you know about Facebook is the same in the breaking world on Facebook. I just, I can't stand the vibe over there is so terrible. It's like one of the most toxic platforms I think that's out, out there right now. Um, so I did that for like six months and I just stopped. I was like, I'm not dealing with grown men who throw hissy fits over not getting hits and breaks and then expect, you know, they expect you to, to send them the break cost and free stuff and like all this. And it's like, you don't go to the casino and put 50 on black and ask for a $35 rebate when you don't hit. Yeah. Like, what are we doing? Like, I yeah. get in breaks more often. Dude. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's crazy. I'll be so like that, that whole thing in 2016 fizzled out really quick. So I, I stopped that. And then 2017 rolled along and I noticed like nobody was doing anything on Instagram. No, there's nobody here. I think card collector too. Like Ryan had just started. He mm-hmm. had like 300 followers when I joined Instagram and he wasn't doing anything really card related, just like posts. I think there was two other people who were doing breaks m- maybe, but not even like breaks. It was, I don't even know. Could wouldn't know what you want to call it. Um, so then Probably I just personals. Yeah. Yeah. Like, per, like Mitch was still, Mitch, you know, Mitch at bullpen. He was yeah. here doing personals. That's when they were, they got really big in 17 doing personals, RBI, same thing. Um, and that's like, was that era it was like a lot of personals. No one was doing breaks. 
that was like strictly like I don't know if you guys remember like Breakers TV, like mm-hmm. yeah, oh, that was that era. That was bad. <laughs> and that fizzled out really quick. Um, so I started on Instagram in 2017, and it just took off because I was the only one. There was nobody mm-hmm. else. So if you wanted to do breaks on, like, imagine going on like the biggest platform right now for breaks, in my opinion, it's got to be TikTok. I mean, what not's huge. Don't get me wrong, mm-hmm. but TikTok's huge just because of how many viewers globally are on it that you can yeah. just randomly get in your you life. Right? Billions of people on, t- on TikTok. So, yeah. so just imagine being the only person on TikTok who's doing a card break. Yeah. Like, it was insane. <laughs> so I've seen I've, I've seen some really bad breakers on there, and they have yeah. 600 people in the live. Yeah, it's I'm, terrible. I'm like, how is this guy got 600 people in live? It's so yeah. boring. I can't sit there. I can't even sit there for two minutes. Yeah. Dude, I say the same thing. And it's all wild card. <laughs> it's like wild card and like. Yeah, or Pokemon. Like, yeah. Well. Like, Pokemon's no. really big on TikTok. Do they do a lot yeah. of breaks on there because I go on a lot of them and I do see that they have like boxes and stuff, but I see mostly repacks on that. It's a it's repacks. It's repacks. it's pick yeah. your teams and stuff. Just, They'll have them all in the store. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of really bad repacks. Really, really bad. bad. I love going in there and I get booted in the first ten minutes. <laughs> yeah, it's the, te- it's the temu of the breaker world. Yeah, hundred percent. I was in there and the guy was doing two Lucas. I got booted right away too, and he was like, "This is." The chase is $2,500. It was two Lucas. Yeah. And I was like, I added them up. I, I put in, I said, those Lucas add up to about 1500 bucks. <laughs> yeah. Boom. Gone. I was yeah, out of, yeah. I was out of the room so fast. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. Um, so it, it's crazy. Like I, I kind of lucked into it. Um, 27, just nobody was there. Right. Like mm-hmm. I, and you know, I'm not a, I, I'm not a douchebag or anything. So everybody, you know, joining my breaks in my lives, it, it kind of just snowballed. Like, and then a couple other people were, were doing breaks in 2018. Then everybody started catching on. And then it just, you know, and then COVID just kind of opened the floodgates to every single Dick and Tom that could open packs was a breaker. So it kind of yeah. got a lot more competitive after 2020, I'd say for sure. That's how I fell into it is I, I started working for my dad's friend who was buying, he was just buying collections on the side. He had been doing this forever and he was also just hoarding wax. He had a room up upstairs, probably a thousand cases of Bowman from 2016 Bowman to at the time to like 2019. And wow. I was in heaven because I was I loved Julio Rodriguez. So I was like, oh, man, let's let's open some let's open some boxes. He's like, I'm not touching those. <laughs> so I was just helping him on the side sorting collections. Yeah. And and he was like, all right, I'm going to go on Instagram. This is bef- he wasn't even breaking it. He was just going on Instagram and selling singles. Yeah. So he would, he would buy these collections and sell singles. And then he was like, I think I'm going to start selling wax. I have so much of it. So then we started doing that. And I kind of built a name for myself in the breaking side. And then I was like, ah, I, could, I think I could do this myself. I was one of those Dick and, yep. <laughs> Dick and Tom guy. I was like, I think I could do this myself. Yeah. But to back to what you were saying. The back end things is where people fall off because they don't, they understand, they just think, oh, I'm going to sell this wax and I'm going to, oh, I'm going to make all this money. And then the live stops and they're like, oh shit, I need team bags. I need bubble mailers. I need a printer. I need to get all these guys' addresses. And now I'm communicating. I got to ship this out in a quarter, uh, uh, a quarterly t- uh, a time, a timely matter. Mm-hmm. Yep. And that's where they fall off because I've seen, probably a hundred of a hundred of our followers go, Oh, I'm going to start a break page. And then three months later, they're either out of the hobby or they're just back to breaking like in our channel again. Yeah. It's hard. It's it's a lot of work and you have to, if you don't ship on time man, those guys are up your ass. And that's why we we try to ship every day, right? We ship, try to ship within 24 hours. You ship every break except on the weekends. Yeah. Except Sundays. So, and our, so right now it's, it's how many people are, are, do you have, under All the right, one so, card okay so we run so covid we were so so let's backtrack a little bit covid i was up to like 27 or 28 employees uh we were dude we we're it was unbelievable i mean i was doing you know in, an insane amount of case breaks every week mm-hmm. can't do that with four people you had to hire people so 27 28 people we we're pared down to like four now that's it four <laughs> so it's me it's me my dad my best friend Corey, who you were breaking with last night um, and my brother, that's it. That's it. That's a whole operation. Um, and you have a, you have a, a fully functional shop, right? Yeah. Yep. Yep. And we have a, in the plaza, we have my shop and then like seven units down. I have all my admin work, like sorting, shipping, 
accounting and all that. Like my, my office is over there, and we have so we have two spaces in the plaza. I remember uh, watching. I think it was nineteen or twenty. You guys were doing Transcendent. Oh man, and that was when I was still driving my old job, and so yeah. I just put. I would watch you guys or Layton during my drives because I was driving eight hours a day for work, yeah. and I would sit there and I just just like. <laughs> Oh my God, this is so great. Transcend it. Like it was so much fun. Um, yeah. Yeah. What, uh, let's talk about that. You, you mentioned something in the text message that, uh, the other day about structure. Cause before there was no structure. Now you have to have structure on these breaks or you're just not going to fill anything. There's not, it's not, it's nothing snap filling anymore. So yeah. it's like from before it was just, just fly at the seat of the pants. Now it's, there's guys that are breaking two boxes with fucking 10 repacks or they're doing yeah. serial number breaks or they're doing random player or pick your player. Like the, a lot of you have to be so creative yeah. now to, to yeah. get in pull interest. Right. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. So the structure doesn't even come from the breaking side in my head. Like the structure comes from how many platforms there are to break on. So mm -hmm. when I say structure, I don't mean like how you structure your breaks. That is one part of it. But I think what the hobby needed the most, and, and this this might be, you know, super hot take, but in my opinion, from being in the hobby so long on the, on the social media side and on the breaker side, I think what the hobby needed the most was what not to come in. And now I don't break on whatnot, but needed whatnot or a company like whatnot needed to come in and provide a platform for breakers to, to break on, right? Mm -hmm. So so whatnot led the way for Fanatics Live, which led the way for um, all these other ones, you know, all these other ones that are out there, yeah. uh, Loop, you know, all of them, right? Yeah. And then on TikTok. So what in my head, like when I see whatnot, that structure looks like is, okay, I'm going to give a guy who doesn't have a website, potentially doesn't have an LLC, which in my eyes is a huge problem. Yeah. Big problem. Have some random dude breaking stuff and there's no legal like liability on the back end. Like they need to fix that. And, and that's something else we can talk about. But when you give somebody a platform where they can post a PYT the right way without having it like, now your guys' posts are extremely structured, which mm -hmm. is why you guys fill your breaks on your Instagram page. Mm -hmm. But I've seen so many posts that are horrendous trying to fill breaks right like and they're reposting the same break 10 times 11 times the same post littered all over their page but when when whatnot rolls in and gives you know people a way to to post their break and it's neat looking and you know you have a face cam and you have all this stuff i feel like that opened up really a lot of people's eyes to okay if i break having a face cam is awesome first mm -hmm. off yeah. getting the technology to have a, a face cam on your stream is awesome so that that led to tiktok being the same thing or that led to many of us including myself downloading stream labs which i never did before um mm. so that just kind of evolved into so much the breaking world into so much more and now people can hate whatnot and they can hate fanatics that's fine there's a lot to dislike about it but mm -hmm. just from a, like a three thousand foot overview just the benefits that it had to the hobby, which is opening up everybody's eyes to what the plat, like what you could make your stream, I think is huge. Because before whatnot came out, you saw me in 2019, dude. I just set my phone up and just hit live. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I, don't I, still do that. <laughs> I wasn't dual streaming YouTube at all. Like I just like cool, dude. I'm using my personal phone. My wife's texting me um, sweet nothings while I'm live. Like, it's, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, like yeah. I'm running breaks and my wife's upstairs and it's like, and she's sending me stuff. And as I'm breaking, I'm like, Oh, that's really cool. Like I'm going to end this live stream in 10 minutes. But you, I mean like, <laughs> like oh, dinner's ready? <laughs> yeah, dude. That's like what, that's guys, like I gotta go. Yeah. <laughs> Snuggles is calling me right now. Yeah, We're going to cuddle. Saying. Yeah. It's, that's like what it was before there was any structure on like the streaming side. Like it wasn't neat. It was ugly. Um, it, the whatnot too with the face cam and these these crazy things you could do with OBS now, yeah. it makes it more person. It makes it more personable, mm -hmm. 100%. and you get those genuine reactions now. Yeah. Before, I mean, we're still because we're we're running on Instagram, which is so 
it's a dying platform for breakers. Yeah. Uh, you guys are for, we're fortunate. You guys are fortunate that we could still actually run breaks because I go into some of these big channels and it is crickets. Yep. Crickets. I mean, Blez has so many followers. You go on their Instagram, you're like, fuck, man, how are they moving product on here? There's five people yeah. in here. Bullpen, yep. same thing. These big names just kind of fizzled out. Yep. And you have to have a community to run on there. And if you don't have that community, they're, they'll they'll just go somewhere else. 100%. So, yeah. um, that's so great. It's so great because uh, at our old uh, condo, Kelsey, uh, my wife, we had just like, a, we, we were breaking in California. We were breaking out of like a, a six by four foot nook. It was like, I was sitting here. <laughs> Sleevey was like on my back hip and it was yeah. like, like, pushing cards off to the side it, it was so it's so tight and the nights where i was i'd go alone i was alone kelsey would walk around the corner and she'd kind of give me the like the wink and nod i'm mm -hmm. like all right guys i gotta get off here <laughs> yeah, uh, i'll dude. see you tomorrow night <laughs> so, it's crazy story when i first started breaking 2017 my first setup was at the foot of my bed i'm not kidding <laughs> oh my god that's sick <laughs> <laughs> it was the I, I mean we were young i mean i was what's this eight years ago i was you know mid-20s uh i didn't have kids i didn't have dogs or anything so I'm, i mean i had a backdrop i actually i still have the same backdrop hanging up in oh, my oh my god what is that so like a white poster with the boxes like dude, taped on <laughs> yeah i went yeah literally i oh we lost them we lost them. literally oh. went to we're back we're back yeah, yeah. I went to Hobby Lobby, got, got this thing, and then look at the products on here, dude. 2018 Contenders Draft. <laughs> oh, that's so great. <laughs> Prism 2017, which put Prism on the map. That's retail. Yeah. Look, uh, Chronicles Baseball 2017. I mean, it's it's insane. And uh, so that's in 2017, story, I was literally, I was literally breaking at the foot of my bed, and. And I would, I'd be lying if there were times at 1130 at night, <laughs> if I'm not looking up and my wife is literally saying, you almost done? Yeah. And it's like, yeah, right, exactly. guys, 1130, I'll give it five more minutes. If we're not full, I got to run. <laughs> yeah. Um, That's so you guys are currently on what Instagram and fanatics live, right? Yeah. Instagram and fanatics live. Um, I was thinking about other how, platforms. It's like, how are you doing on fanatics live? I'm not gonna lie. I'm, we're actually doing really well. Um, we and this is actually kind of crazy. Um, which at, might, maybe not crazy. We just had our first month ever where a different platform outperformed my Instagram breaks with gross money in. So that's surprising because we that's were crazy. we were asking. I mean, over. you might be one of few people like doing well on there, and it's not a knock on Fanatics Live, but man, we we were there were days we sat sat on there for. 12 to 15 hours yep. and we'd get off and I go, Hey man, we just, just, just made 400 bucks. Yeah. It's not pretty. I, not, don't get me wrong. It, it's not pretty at all. Um, mm -hmm. we hired, we have Matt who streams over there for us. So I don't, I have to stick to, to, to Instagram. And I mean, you mm -hmm. get it. Yeah. If, if I can go stream on fanatics live, that's fine. But if I never stream on Instagram, then we're dead. Like, yeah, I agree. I am our community on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Core, my best friend Corey's great, who you broke with last night, but he's not the community. He's not the guy who built this from 2016, right? So, yeah. And the guy, the people on Fanatics, they have no connection with me really at all. So they don't care. Like, yeah. they don't care. So I hired a guy from, from Layton, his name's Matt, who breaks for me on Fanatics Live. Now, I haven't had talks with him because every Layton breaker is literally the same. They're, they're robots from the thing they're robots <laughs> I and i talked to and it no holy shit man i've i've talked to rich about it before at conferences and stuff i've talked to matt who i hired it's like they go through the same training on the tone of voice and what they need to say when they get a big hit it's wild yeah. i i agree and i watch Great. them all the time and i'm like is there is there a script or is there like Hey, you, you can't, you can't the writing on the wall. You can't, uh, get outside of this decibels of, of, of sound. Like you can't, you, you have to say this, these certain words. Cause yeah. I, I started when I was watching them, I, I liked, um, fuck. What was his name? Oh my God. Oh, big, bad, Brad, Brad. I would watch Brad. Oh, Brad, Brad, 
Breaking Brad. Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah I Breaking would watch Brad, Brad and, and I was like, because I and I would always go, hey, it's Brad with Leighton Sports Cards <laughs> ripping 1819 <laughs> Prism Choice. Let's go. Cup boom. <laughs> when he hits a big hit. Yeah, yeah cup boom. <laughs> Boom! Nice hit, <laughs> Orioles. <laughs> I loved it, and then he stopped breaking. And, oh, I, and yeah, I would tell right. Stevie, "I'm like, dude, where's Brad at? Brad was the best." Um, yeah, did you guys rip good. Top Sterling? Good. Matt, the did, guy. Did you? So we, oh fuck, we we ripped top, we ripped it. it. It's that was probably the hardest. <laughs> yeah, we did too, to <laughs> dude. I I I don't know. It took I don't know why product, but it just took us forever to fill every single break. It's because the cards, that product is not good. I they got to do something with that product because one, it they've kept it the same the whole time. Two, the cards do not sell. They no. they do not sell. You hit a one. We hit a one Soto to ten, no. and I and the guy was excited, and I and I told the guy, I said that that's a two hundred dollar card. Mind you, it's tops. Top Sterling 2024, so yeah. he should actually be in a Yankees uniform as well, too, and he was not. Yeah, but they got to use the game. The game it's a the game use yeah. mem, mem. It's got to be with the Padres. But I, yeah. I don't know. I, I, I have it on my thing here. I was like, Top Sterling either needs to be revamped or it's got to go. Because well, you're the fact that that comes out on the site, it dropped at 1050 a box on top. There's no money to be made on those box, those those cards. We no. we had a tw uh, we had a consignment, and a guy had an Otani, like 2020 Otani Top Sterling PSA 10. I think the guy got like 3k for it, and it was a patch auto. It was to 10. Oh, I'm like this card should pay for the case. 100. 3, thousand. Like it, there's just I don't know, man. Yeah. I I'm so I'm so over. Well, these I think the pro problem is. Is it, guys, the the problem is timing. That the problem is timing. What what released last week? What product? Uh, tri was it tribute? Tri tribute. That's garbage oh. too. But yeah. dynasty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dynasty. You, you and cannot Sterling? have dynasty. You can't have dynasty and top Sterling within a month from each other. That's no. that, not only are you going to get buyer attrition, you're going to see that for, for what's a, a dynasty box? I think is like sixteen hundred. I think maybe. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Yeah. For four hundred more bucks, I'm buying Dynasty. Yeah. This is what it is. I mean, yeah, that's, exactly. That's the truth. Yeah, the resale value on Dynasty, like even a lower end player to five with a nice patch, you're gonna fetch way more money than the Sterling. They've never changed really at the design. The design, it, it's literally the same thing every year. There's every no change on the design. There's no change on, on, like they could cut the checklist in half. And charge the same amount, and people it just make the product better. I know they're trying to make, I know they're trying to get their money back, <laughs> fanatics. But I, I don't know. That's that's the one thing, and we could talk. I think we should segue into fanatics yeah. with the fanatics takeover recently, and in the coming eighteen to twenty four months with basketball and football supposedly coming over. What's your takes on that? Like the good, the bad, and what you could potentially see being the ugly with this. Uh, let's, I like to start with bad first, always in life. Mm -hmm. Um, every, so here's the thing. Everybody's always, everybody always trashes Panini and rightfully so they, you know, if they're Panini is a Panini, they're a card, they're a card manufacturer. They're not going to have perfect QC. They're not. I mean, so before fanatics took over, everyone's trashing Panini for QC. Well, mm -hmm. fanatics takes over. What's everyone trashing fanatics and Tosser? Their QC sucks. I mean, yeah, draft was that, really bad. It's right. bad. Like, yeah. and, dude, logo fractor is just as bad too. Did you the trout one of one I pulled literally looked like somebody in QC took their toenails and ran it down the front of the car. I mean, <laughs> oh my god! And that's a product hit. I mean, that's a that's a a pink one of one. I mean, the rose gold. It shouldn't rose be gold. like that. Maybe um, they had an, a feet only fans and they were selling <laughs> selling cards. I mean, something. And so so you everyone's trash and panini, rightfully so. They've been taking advantage, in my opinion. Really, since COVID, they've been taking advantage of the hobby, which that's fine. You can be mad at them, but don't expect anything less from Tops. Like, yeah, you, do you, people think that Tops is getting these these licenses to to break even, to no. to lose money. Yeah. You're out of your mind. Ruben didn't come in to break even. Like, it, he's not an idiot. He's going yeah. to make money whichever way he can. So, the the way you make money is either number one, you spend a ton of money and you flip that into more profit, or you cut costs. 
and you raise prices somewhere, right? I mean, or you add products. So that's going to happen if it hasn't already. The other thing is you just, you in which what has happened is you increase your sell price to your direct customers. So for example, as soon as Tops took over, that first release for uh, Bowman Draft for Jackson Holiday, that 22. Yeah. My cost on a hobby was 350 per box. Yeah. It was like 95 bucks for a hobby. For Bowman Draft. <laughs> Jumbo was like 665. <laughs> yeah. So Jumbo was 665 direct for me. And I, that's with my direct account with Tops, my shop account, which is insane. So that's what they did. You know, they're, they're, it's a good product and you have to say yes to taking the allocation. You can't lose it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and it is what it is. Um, but then again, like when it comes to tops and stuff, what people need to understand is, and everyone is so excited about the tops takeover, which is fine. And I arguably I am too, because I want to see, you know, the Bowman Chrome basketball stuff come back. hundred like, like, cool. percent and like, tops Chrome cool. football, all that, that stuff. Is, but what we need to do is you need to look at baseball because they already they're using baseball already as a stepping stone for their products. So look at everything that they're going to create. Right. And look or look at baseball. Bowman draft. Bowman. Bowman chrome. How many different Bowman sets are there that come out? Right. Yeah. yeah you have going, you have the three and then you have then you have the sapphires in between. They're going to do the same thing for base for football and basketball. They're going to do that. So if you you think that everyone thinks that, oh, you know, Panini had a lot of saturation. Well, you just wait because you have 17 different paper base Corbin Carroll rookies starting from series one to update. And yeah. nobody know and, and nobody understands what a flagship rookie is nowadays. They have no idea. So yeah, you got somebody, oh, I have a PSA 10 update Corbin Carroll rookie this thing is this is rookie card like, no it's not i don't want that to throw, throw that in the garbage i don't want that it's a sticker so i i do like do I, their... I was gonna say i do like they there's one guy at fanatics that i really like his name's jeff gordon the guy is a sponge every time i've talked to him or had an interaction yeah. with him he takes in absorbs it he at he's like very yes like this with me it's like yeah. It, like okay okay is that what you really think that i'm like yes like i told him last year i was like why are we have why do we have purple sapphire change change the purple like let's do black sapphire black sapphire is so clean in star wars it's a great it's a great parallel yeah. purples don't sell like if you look at the the purple sapphire autos to the orange sapphire autos the orange like typically sell yes. for the same amount of money yeah like get yes. rid of those and he's like okay yeah all right well we'll, we'll look into that and then Fast forward, they got rid of the purples and it was great. And then they added autos in draft sapphire, which I've always said they yes. should have autos in draft sapphire. Every, you know, imagine, yeah. imagine Torkelson having the draft sapphire autos and and those players in 2020 or 2019 draft. Yeah. So I think they're going the. I think they're doing things right in some areas and wrong. And I I, I totally agree with you. They're gonna, it's gonna be saturated. There's yeah. we're gonna have just waves upon waves of these products and these. Um, rookies in everything. I mean, yeah. we just got Tops Chrome Black 2023. What in December, this. January, or November? And <laughs> already then we got just... solicited for 24. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, what? It's completely Crazy. ass backwards. What are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> but I will, I will say this. So that's the potential bad, right? It, you would have to be blind to not see how good Fanatics is for Tops. The, the way that they're using players at that marketing. house in Arizona. Yeah. I, it's unbelievable. And the way they're marketing it, the way mm. that they're using shops around the U S for those rip nights, the way that they're, I mean, it's, this has never been done before. And this is what has needed to happen. Mm. It, yeah. And Panini, Panini would have never been able to get Tom Brady to show up at a card shop and do some sort of wow. thing. You know, Michael Rubin can pick up the phone call and get, Anybody, anybody he wants that, anywhere that's... at any time. And they're there. So I, I think that's one good thing. The other thing I, I spoke with Ruben at the national and the fir he was so excited. I've never even met him before. And he was like, you see the redemptions, how low the redemptions are. And I was like, yeah, he was like, yeah, I want, I want to get completely get rid of redemption. That's a big thing. For yes. Panini. That's huge. Yeah. So, cause I mean, you got, you got the horror stories of people having Otani redemptions that are 
expired and it's fifteen twenty thousand dollar card and they're getting sent a heritage pack <laughs> the, the the old the good old tops the tops redemption uh whatever care package the, care package oh yeah. it's so bad it's so bad yeah, at um, least they put the fun fatty inside that little care package for you <laughs> <laughs> what's uh do you have a pc at all yeah so i don't have it here it's too it's way too robust so um i my pc is a little bit different so oh, I am a modern players. Any to be fair, anymore. I did collect. Um, I had I had two players that I, I heavily like invested or collected in 2018. That was Bryce Terang and Shea Gilgis Alexander. So uh, with Bryce, Bryce just got called up. I I literally mm -hmm. got rid of almost every one of his cards because I was in so low. Why not? I'm, see ya. Got rid of those. I have no personal those. connection to the guy at all. I don't yeah. Mind. Uh, with Shay, I can I'll I'll send you I gotta send you guys the photo I had. I had by far the biggest Shay collection. I <laughs> this I don't have you ever heard the the story about me getting like hooked on Shay Gilgis Alexander or no? No, tell it. All right, so I've told the story before, but I was downtown in downtown Cleveland for for March Madness. Shay was on Kentucky. Um, I was I had a couple of beverages. <laughs> and, and, and I'm watching the games and I see this kid dribbling the ball and I had made a joke. Like I look at the back of his Jersey and it's like, it's ridiculous. Like his yeah. name is it's his like a jersey. half rainbow or it's like a rainbow. So I'm like, I'm like, I, 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 I tap my butt and I go, is I go I'm, real quietly. I go, it's either I've had a lot of drinks or this guy's name <laughs> goes from his hip to his other hit. <laughs> and he's like no man that's his name and he's like he's like pretty good so i was like all right so i start watching him immediately hooked on shea goes so i start buying everything what come i was buying contenders draft picks on card autos cracked ice all this stuff like true ntrpas um i had the mosaic um this is when mosaic the first year mosaic came out was i think 2018 i believe yeah it, it was luca year it was great it was yeah. a great product it was so cheap it was yeah cheap. They were lit Panini was literally giving away cases at the national, like giving a like 600 bucks a cab for a 20 bucks case, like crazy. So wild. Um, so I was with um, one of my buddies, we were buying cases of that. I hit the one of one black Shea, uh, which is rookie card, but doesn't have a rookie symbol on it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I hit that. I graded it PSA 10. I had that. I had a, a two or three gold vinyls from uh, Optic, uh, PSA 10 those. Um, t I mean, just tons. I have personal shoes. I knew the, I end up getting to know the equipment manager for the Clippers when he's on the Clippers. I have personalized shoes, jerseys, like all this stuff. COVID rolls around. <laughs> and I, listen, I was in on this stuff, maybe like eight to 10 grand. Like mm -hmm. admittedly at before that, that's like a lot of money pre COVID to spend on a player. Yeah. Who you didn't know was going to be good. Who wasn't even in the rotation for the Clippers. Right. COVID rolls around and all of a sudden he get or he got traded to OKC and his prices just start going through the roof. And I'm like, I'm like talking to my dad. I'm like, dude, I don't know if like, should I wait? Like, should I, what do I do? And my dad's like, just hang on. Like, so we're, see where his prices go. It got to the point where like his NTRPAs were peaking like over 10 grand. Like at the, at the time, that was a lot. They're more yeah. now. Like they're yeah. crazy now. So I ended up, I sold my entire collection to someone on Instagram. I don't even know. Who, I, I might be able to find it for almost like 70 grand. Like oh, the, 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 shit, yeah. the one of one alone was like 27 K like the, the, uh, the, the PSA 10 mosaic. And if you know, mosaic, that's not a good product. <laughs> like, that no. was like an insert product. Nobody wanted it. So if someone was going to pay me 27 K for a Shea one of one, and he was my PC. There's a point in time where you're like, all right, this isn't a PC anymore. Yeah. This is this is seventy grand. <laughs> <laughs> was like, was that house. is that your biggest like come up, or have you had a bigger come up on like a single card? I've had a bigger come up not on a card. Um, I've had a bigger. Okay, so <laughs> here's my biggest come up. Biggest come up co during COVID. Uh, all the card shows were shut down. Right. So no one was doing card shows. Everyone had uh, everyone who did card shows. And I have a lot by me. I don't know about you guys, but I had a lot of people who do card shows for a living. Like that's like mm -hmm. they're they traveled to card shows a lot. Um, older yeah. guys and stuff. 
Um, so a guy who was local to me was like, Hey, I can't go to car shows. I have to sell on eBay now. And I'm just starting, everything is selling so quick. Like, so he comes into my shop and he has a box and he's like, all right, I need to, can I just put everything I want in a box and just, you give me a price. And I was like, sure. So, and I, at the time, like I had like PSA eight Hank Aaron rookies autographed with hall of fame, like in, Oh, I lost him. Keep getting phone calls. All right. So I like uh, PSA. Good. I had like PSA eight. I like PSA eight. Hank Aaron rookies. Um, like autograph. I had like crazy stuff in my showcases back then because it, it moved them. So he goes through and he he loads this box up, like just loads it up. Um, and he comes to me. It's probably like fifty or sixty grand worth of stuff. Um, comped, not sticker. Sticker was probably like eighty five grand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, I'm not going to, that's my buddy. I'm not going to sell him yeah. stickers, stupid. Um, you know, you guys know. So oh, yeah. it com- comes out like 55 or 60 K. I'm like, I was like, dude, I was like, Jim, what are we doing here? Like, <laughs> like I know, like, you don't have, like, I know the guy, right? Like, I'm like, yeah. you don't have 60 grand liquid right now. Pulls out his pocket, keys to his ZO2 Corvette. And he goes, if you want, I'll trade you the Corvette for these cars. Here's KBB value. I've got the title and everything right now. So, if, and oh my God, we can go. I was not expecting this. No, me neither. <laughs> so he's like, we go, I have it outside right now. I drove it, and we can go take a look at it. So I, I'm like, my jaw dropped, and I was like, Are we really doing this right now? And that, and I, so then I started asking him questions because now I'm just intrigued. I thought he was kidding. Yeah. So it was like. A, a two driver car from Florida had never seen a winter, like 10,000 miles on it. Like for a 2017, like that's insane at the time. Yeah. So we end up doing a deal for all those cards for a white out, like fully custom Corvette, like white out stingray version. And uh, that was probably the craziest trade. Like I've come up. I've ever had because <laughs> it, you got to think of those- hobby. Dude, I had those cards for a very long time. Those weren't a quite like I was probably in on those cards five to ten grand, maybe, right? Yeah, but yeah. I, those are cards me and my dad had for a very long time. Um, yeah. that we so, got what the wife say, like, Hank Aaron's only a thousand. Oh, she loved the car, but we we end up getting pregnant like two months later so <laughs> she was so happy with the car yeah. <laughs> she's yeah. happy with the car we yeah. had a really fun summer with the car but after that <laughs> summer we we did get smart i did get rid of the car um this is still during peak covid when not, not peak like towards maybe middle end covid can't find cars cars were going crazy like yeah. i sold oh, yeah. the car for like 56k cash at the I, I had a we had a subaru ascent the the um uh the whatever it's called the suv yeah suv so i i leased it for three years after three years i take it back and the guy goes do you want to trade it in or do you want to keep it i said i'll just what if i just trade it back to you they had no cars on the lot it was really weird (laughs) and he was and i i was down to like 20 grand that i owed that i would would have flipped into a loan and he goes, well, we'll give you 35 grand for the, for the Subaru. And I was like, <laughs> done deal. Done yeah. deal. I, I was like, just roll that 15 over to the lease. And my, my le- brand new car, my lease dropped like $300 I'm a sorry. month. Yeah, that's great. And that's the car we have oh, now. Yeah, I, was, now yeah. I was like, I don't, I, I wanted to get something else, but I looked at Kelsey. I was like, we're keeping, we're staying with the Subaru. And it's, yeah. I only got that cause it was, it's the safest midsize SUV on, on the road. Yeah. So. 100%. Yeah, I flipped uh, the, uh, the 50, the cash I got from the dealership, I flipped into like an Equinox for my wife. Yeah. And we got like a, uh, an extension on the back of the house. So I was smart with the money. I'm, I'm, I've invested into the house I'm in, right? So you can get that yeah. back when you sell it. Um, I didn't like blow it on anything. Thank God. My wife was literally pocket watching, making sure I wasn't being stupid. <laughs> hey stay away from that bovada baby yeah <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> um all right i want to do a rapid fire yeah rapid fire questions here so and rapid then, uh, fire. i've seen you guys i've seen you guys do this before it's not so the same questions fire, either anything that comes to mind just say it yeah, yeah. anything oh yeah all right that. fanatics or panini fanatics bowman or prism bowman 
Submission or TKO? TKO. Day game or night game? Night game. Grass or turf? Grass. LeBron or Kobe? LeBron. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I now I, I there's a stipulation. So now the follow up is LeBron or Jordan? LeBron. I'm from. I'm born and raised. I know. In Cleveland. I, that's why I had to bring up LeBron. Yeah. A uh, Miami LeBron or Cleveland LeBron? <laughs> Miami LeBron. It's not, Miami LeBron, not even close. Flawless or NT? <sighs> NT. You have to eliminate one from this list forever. Tier one, museum, five star, or tribute? Tribute. <laughs> nice. All right, last one. You were stranded on a deserted island in the middle of the ocean. You get one hobby influencer to help you survive. Who is it? Oh, God. Like oh. oh my gosh. Hold on. You gotta give me a second here. <laughs> one with brains. <laughs> I don't I mean or one without. So you make them do a work. <laughs> or one without, right? I all right. I don't know if you guys know who this is, but I feel like it's for, he only comes to mind because I feel like he's smart as hell. You know Cage? Yeah. Cage Lawler. Cage Lawler. He's, Cage. Cage. he's yeah. smart yeah. as hell, dude. He's got He's an actual lawyer, right? Yes, he's an actual that, lawyer. That's he could get us out of this. I mean, <laughs> I feel like he's he's I don't know. I he looks like a big dude, so maybe he can help build stuff. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, who knows? <laughs> hey, that's good. Yeah, you know? that's good. Who would you go with? Ah, fuck. Oh, I know there's there's one answer to this. Yeah. And I you and I go, have the go, same answer. Go for it. it has to be Shane. It has to be Shane. Yeah. He was on Survivor. Yeah. He, yeah. he knows oh, everything. Oh shit. That's a good one. Yeah. yeah. Shane was on Survivor. Shane was on Survivor. Teddy would probably go see Blizz because they'd probably just be bet betting on the island. Yeah. For, and and hey, it's it's legal to bet on the island. We're betting bananas. <laughs> <laughs> fucking monkeys. Betting bananas. Yeah, dude. Apples, whatever you have. Oh, yeah. I raise you a coconut. <laughs> yeah. I've got three bananas on the on the on this game right now. Huge pot. Huge pot. I mean that maybe some firewood or something. Yeah. I mean, what are we doing? <laughs> no, Teddy won. <laughs> All right, this is fun, man. I appreciate you coming on. Uh, I, I'd like to have you come back on uh, more often, too. Do so. you have any questions for us? Yeah. Are you guys coming to National or no? Yeah, we'll be yes. at National. Uh, are you? I'll be at the Tops Conference at the end of the month. Are you, You're you going to be there, right? I, I so assume. I, in Georgia? I will not be at the Tops Conference because my wife's, our second child's due in early May. Yeah, release date, right? Yeah, release date. I like that. <laughs> that's a hey, that's the Bowman baby, you can call it. Yep, five eight, man, five eight. So I'm excited. I'm I am excited for that. But yeah, it's it's so you when you guys get to Cleveland, I'll make sure. Do you guys already you guys already have place to stay? We have a buddy who's trying to get a massive Airbnb, just to everyone crashing. So um let me know what let me know like what areas you're looking at so i'll make sure i get you guys the shoddiest area ever <laughs> <laughs> literally get shot get sh get, get a little drive-bys <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i'll get you guys the worst airbnb are you now, do you do you set up at national so i don't set up no i'm not gonna set up um just be that my shop is 15 minutes from the national oh, we'll have to we'll have to come by and do something maybe we'll yeah, do like a, yeah you got we'll do, do like a collaboration rip or something because yeah, I for sure. last year Tops Chrome came out the week of national. <laughs> it it usually does. Yeah. But like I don't like the thing with like Tops and even Panini, their release dates have been so jacked up. Like I don't like usually like Immaculate Collegiate comes out during mm -hmm. the national, but it didn't I don't think it did last year. No. I just remember in the Airbnb, we probably we ran like 20 cases of of Topps Chrome update break uh or not update Topps Chrome Breakers Delight. Yeah, we were just running through that in the Airbnb. Okay. So, but yeah, let's let's try to figure something out. Let's do a collab. We'll come over to the shop. We'll For we'll sure. do some content together, and um, I think it'll be fun. Yeah, I think it's gonna be great. National's gonna be fun, man. I can't wait. Yeah, man. it's always fun. Um, all right, man. I appreciate you coming on, Teddy. Any any last words? No, I appreciate you coming on. It's good. Uh, good to meet you. Yeah. yeah, good to meet you guys too. We'll appreciate look, uh, every single one of you. Yeah, we'll see you in uh we'll see you guys in August then. All right, cool. Thank awesome. you. Hey, thank you, Steve. Appreciate see it. You later, Everyone uh listening, uh following, like, share, comment, do the deal. We <laughs> appreciate everyone listening. Um, we will see you guys next week. Yes, we will with another guest. Yes, we will. Awesome. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see you guys later. Peace. Thank you.